distributory network. And there is your optical network inside your eyes, of course. And this is a tree. Now, if you look at all these networks, they do have a certain kind of similarity. Uh, they're fractals in nature. Now, uh, all these fractal networks have some kind of organizing principle behind them. And that's what I'll be talking about. And uh, the science that studies this is called complex systems. And uh, it's a pretty <coughs> interdisciplinary science. There are people from sociology, computer science, as I said, from different fields who study these networks and come up with a lot of interesting findings. So my aim here is to, first is I want to uh, emphasize that what you're dealing with in terms of online world is a complex network. So like, as Mr. Abraham actually said, uh, what would happen if you have a 3D world, you can have similar organization principles. It's just, it's at a different level. So that's what I'm going to talk about. So what's a complex system? Uh, most of the popular science writers, they say the whole is greater than some of its parts. Uh, it's actually pretty easy to understand. Let's say you take arbitrarily 10 different people and you call them a group. There's nothing much in that group. It's just 10 people, they can move in and move on. But let's say you have a community of 10 people. The community is an entity it's greater than just these 10 people. There's something else to it. There's an organization that creates the next level. That's what a complex system is. You have individual entities. This is the structure of a complex system. They are agent-based. That means they are unique, they are individual. Uh, they are heterogeneous. So you don't have a lot of people who look the same, a lot of, you know, you don't have a lot of dots that just interact with each other. They are really diverse, different, different entities that interact, but they're singular, hence the agent based. And the interaction is non-linear. So what happens is this interaction comes, uh, creates a kind of chaos in the system. Now what this chaos is, is quite difficult to understand at the lower level. However, due to dynamic adaptation and feedback, you have levels of organization that emerge out of the system. Hence, any system that has all this and least emergence can be characterized as a complex system. Now, uh, next, I believe I have a picture Whoa. that will explain to you what is complex system. <laughs> so, uh, this is a simple system. All of us here. <laughs> right. So, uh, what happens here is we just have interaction, that's a huge amount of chaos. I talk something, you talk something, we all just talk something. That makes no sense here. But, at some level, you have what we call self-organized criticality. That is, 10 of us talk the same thing, it doesn't make a big news. 100, yeah, you know, it's kind of a slight buzz. 1,000, boom, yeah, our community. That's what you call SOC, self-organized crit crit criticality. And uh, this is what I say, when you have such small communities, clicks, these clicks bond together, they create a bigger community, and these communities all join together to create what you know as the WWW. So this is complex networks, and it can be uh, explained through this simple diagram. And what we have here is the time scale, which is the most important part in understanding a complex network. We have different networks. Transportation networks have also been uh, understood as a complex network, but transport networks organize themselves over hundreds of years. You have a road today, it doesn't change tomorrow. Social networks change, but what you have to understand is such networks, despite being on different time scales, exhibit similar properties. Hence, I believe it's important that if anyone is trying to do a business in web, trying to make a social networking, uh, software, social networking site, maybe something that harnesses networks. Study of complex systems will actually help you understand why your product will work. Next is, what is a complex network? I told you what's a complex system. It's a complex network. It's not very different, it's just a graphical representation. It's a large network with complex features and unique topology. You have simple network, he said a star network, there's just one guy and a lot of spokes. Then you have lattices, which are also kind of network. They're all regular. But complex networks are not like that. They're kind of different. They have very different topology and features. What I'm giving you here is the similarity in complex networks. You have internet, you have power grid networks in USA, you have protein interactions in the human body, you have the World Wide Web, you have the citation network of mathematical uh, papers, and you have, okay, that's both actually. <laughs> so what you see is they actually exhibit similar properties. They are scale-free networks. What are scale-free yeah, networks? Access? Yeah. Sorry? Yeah, what's, access. Up, what's up the access? Okay, access, yes. Uh, this is probability distribution, and this is the this is the size. Meaning, uh, let me put in a simple, uh, let's say you have a web page, right? Now, how many web pages have, let's say, uh, 10 connections? Now, you can actually uh, attach a probability to, to that such kind of system. So what is the probability that one pa web page has like a billion connections? That probability is really low. So hence one, uh, We'll go like that. And this is actually a cumulative distribution. So what you have to see is like 1,000 web pages, this is a distribution. As you go 100, this is a cumulative distribution of uh, scale-free networks. And here, I've actually taken it from quite a few sources on Axel, which is a free uh, 
platform where people exchange papers and statistical mechanics. Uh, these are the data I've collected and I'm too impressed. They actually follow the same <laughs> principles. You can call it long tail belts. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's actually called a long tail distribution. <laughs> long tail, scale free, uh, they have similar properties, so they just <laughs> use interchange. Now, uh, why is network analysis useful? Let's you to understand the process that's shaping the web. Why did uh, Orkut rock? You know, why did it make it so popular? What creates that buzz on the online? How does the web shape? How does Google Citation League really give you accurate results? These are processes that have a fundamental science behind it, and that's complex systems. My aim here is not to actually lecture about complex systems because it's a huge science, it has a lot of math, some of which I actually don't understand. <laughs> but what I hope to create here is to create the buzz. I want maybe some of you here would actually find this interesting, go back and maybe create the next startup that utilizes this, which is my whole aim. So, uh, just to give you an example, this is a network of blogs. And why do I think complex network is awesome? Now, you see all these blogs are connected, but you see there are it's a common train here it's firearms. These people like firearms. Now, these people here like libertarianism. So that's a kind of political philosophy, I guess so, so liberty and all that stuff. <laughs> this is capitalism, that's economics, atheism, cognitive sense. Now, when you have vital marketing strategies, what happens? You just see a couple of people, you hope they pass information. Some of it fails, some of it doesn't. What happens? What is the science behind it? Well, if you look at the complex networks here, you have the first level of network, which is the relationship network. All these people are linked. You have a second level of network, which I would call the idea network. How are these people linked with particular ideas? The firearms is one network of all these people who like firearms. So you have different networks that can be mapped on to the real networks. The question is, if we can generate this complex network and then maybe do an analysis of blogs, what, what they talk about, what are the different uh, tastes. Maybe we could do an analysis of the technology tags. You know, you get a good idea as to what is the interest. Now, once we get all this interest, and let's say you are a startup company that's specializing in uh, Firearms. <laughs> Maybe you're creating online firearms. I know that sounds really good, nice, but <laughs> I've not been able to think of anything nice now, so bear with me. So you wouldn't want to try a viral marketing strategy over there, because that guy loves freedom, and I'm pretty sure he doesn't like firearms. So you start something there, and that particular node of a network is never going to propagate, it's never going to become a buzz. But if you do it here, there's a good chance it's going to become a buzz, because the probability that he is going to pass on this information to someone else who likes firearms is pretty high because that is the idea network here. Now that's pretty much what I want to talk about is have we come now, uh, this is live journal uh, wow. here. This is supposed to be in the uh, notes but unfortunately I pasted it wrong. So my <laughs> question is are we coming to a network centric marketing strategy now? Uh, to give you an example why is network centric important is uh, right now in warfare everyone is talking about network centric warfare. In World War II when he had Britain bombing uh, Germany, you had carpet bombing. People just bombed everywhere, hoping to, what do you call, uh, cripple the infrastructure. But now when you have USA bombing Iraq, or when you had Israel bombing Lebanon, the big news that happened in Lebanon was one particular bridge in Beirut was totally cancelled off. And that created huge chaos in Lebanon. What happened was, it was a network-centric uh, warfare strategy. They hit a critical node in that network, which cascaded failures everywhere. Now that was a destructive act. Now let us say I want to do that in marketing. Who is that node on the World Wide Web with my particular idea interest that if I target, I can spread my information efficiently? I believe complex networks can help you in that. So you map different information layers onto relationship networks, which I believe is the fundamental network in complex networks, at least in human dynamics. And then we utilize this information for marketing, which is what I believe could be the next network-centric marketing strategy. And uh, that is what I hope to talk about <laughs> as to how you can do that and maybe some ideas. Uh, maybe people who have experience in viral marketing, how I could maybe help. <coughs> how do you use this? Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, first thing uh, what we can do is, let's say you have a network. I mean, first you need to map networks, right? So you could do uh, blog analysis. Let's say how many guys uh, call each other's links. One, we could do email analysis. Uh, let's say you send an email, like how Milgram six degree of separation, that should sound a chord with some people here. Six degrees of separation, no two people are separated by six degrees. He did that through mail. So I send you a mail and then you write your name and then you send your mail and then you know we just get all the people's names on the mail and then we say, okay, these people are connected with each other. So so many degrees of separation. We could do that. Uh, we have technologies, as I showed you, Touchcraft does that. Uh, it's a very simple startup. They do network mapping. You map the networks. Next, in the ideal world, let's say if all the blogs had technology tags, then you could map the technology tags. You create a frequency distribution, a histogram, saying, okay, this guy actually has blocked so many times about firearms, something related with guns. So he likes guns. Then you go throughout his network and you see how is he connected to other people who like guns. Then you start creating a network. 
idea network that is mapped onto relationship network now as a viral marketing you want to create sustain sustainable strategies you want to talk with people you want to deal with people you don't want to spend your resources everywhere then you can find out who is the center guy in this network through which most of the information passes and then you can start having uh, maybe you could pass him some messages maybe you could actually uh, inculcate him as part of your marketing strategy and then propagate this message koshik yeah uh, i could just do this by googling firearm blog right i'd find this one guy who's the best fire uh, place to start yeah. off a firearm so i mean is there something better than that is there something more focused i can do with if i could do all of this analysis myself but you see uh, even if you google firearms right you will get a lot of blogs and firearms but you will not get the network value what i mean by network value but is google automatically google ranks the ones that have the network value but uh, you have to actually see see google does does in links and out links right Okay. You don't actually see what is the network value of his. Now that could be mm -hmm. one guy who actually has a, no blog attachments at all. Maybe he just has three blog attachments, but he's connected to one other person who is a great. Maybe he's like a, what do you call the most popular guy in networks. So you could actually target this guy who has very few network connections of his own, but his network value as such is pretty high because people who are connected on his networks have the capacity to spread this message exponentially large. So the question is, how are you going to adapt your strategy? That is what is. You have to think about it. Question: In the context of the web, right, is it cheaper to find a specific node to target or just to spam? Well, uh, if you look at spam, one of the reasons I guess spam does work is it just randomly targets a lot of people, yeah. and then it does hit a right <coughs> target, right? Yeah. Uh, like some guy who actually has some problems with some part of his body, who thinks <laughs> that's an interesting thing, and he clicks on that. Yeah. Now, <laughs> well, there exists a network there, but he just did it randomly. There's so much of resources that is spent. And plus, it would really create a bad uh, PR impression if you're a company and you start spamming people about the uh, something really cool in music. Let's say I'm a music startup, and uh, I've created this new device that could maybe do you know maybe you could start mixing songs. And I wouldn't want to target the guy who has very high ranking in music just because his blog is popular, mm -hmm. but he is not like his network does not have a lot of music <coughs> influence. So maybe he'll blog about it, but it will die right there because his network is not going to pass on that message. So it's useful to understand how the network is. Now, some other thing you can actually see if you map the networks is if you have a lot of interdirected links with each other, that's a click. So it's a community. It's pretty strong. If you don't have a lot of outside links, so you pass <coughs> a message here, then you can you can actually target the whole community because it's going to pass around. Then you have certain networks in which you have like two different clicks, and there's one guy who targets these two. They are like spreaders. So you pa pass the information to them. It's a good chance it's passed to these two networks. Which is why I said. Network topology is not simple. It's very complex. So you have to map it out to understand how it is. And that network topology, as such, has a lot of information that you are you <coughs> can harness. So uh, what I've given you is just a brief thing. Maybe uh, if you're interested, you could actually read up a lot on what the research that has been done. Maybe how we can translate that. Uh, as of now, I haven't seen any Web 2.0 or any internet startup that's actually trying to harness this. But maybe you guys could be the next. I think they haven't really harnessed this because well, it's interesting to know how these things work. The nature of viral things that are viral is such that it will just spread. Actually, it will just it will, it will keep spreading whether you target the 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 right node or not. Well, uh, again, <coughs> you say viral. It depends on what's the information content, right? So it also depends on what network you're map mapping. If oh, you're having like, really like, generic information, which has a high information utility, which everyone would like, no matter which node you start, it's going to go. But you have very specific information that you want to target, and you just seed it in one node. It's not going to go anywhere because it's not important as to what who you're targeting is important as to what is the propagative effect of that information. So if you map a network really well, and you actually have an idea as to what that network is talking about, and you map and you see this information, the person who's who are going to see this guy or person who are connected to him, they themselves will start mapping this information. So what you say is true, but it's only true for a very specific trivial case where the information is absolutely popular. popular. Uh, I think I think that. Sorry. Uh, okay. Um, uh, but okay. Okay. I, I think that the fractal approach is very interesting, but I think that coming up mapping the mapping the network is the easier part. But I think coming up with the context with which they are, say, okay, so suppose you find a bunch of blocks that talk about uh, say firearms, right? And then there's this firearms uh, manufacturer, okay, I'm gonna target this group. Not knowing that actually this firearm is actually this firearms community is actually anti firearms community. So I think that Getting the context of which the community is actually talking about certain issues is much harder than I mean. There's, I mean, it just seems to me there's a lot more AI that's got to build into it. 
it's not just like you know for you to just stay down mining. Okay, fine, I'm trying out, and you just get a text. But I, mean, that, that I think mapping that is easy, but coming up with the contact is much more difficult. So. The first part would be easy, as you said. The second part, I guess, you have to have some kind of intelligent algorithm that could mine data. But another thing you must remember is every person's total, uh, what do you call it? Let's say each person had an information utility. Blogs would not reflect that. I would only blog, let's say, about a few topics. There would be certain other things in my life I'd be interested in. So uh, <coughs> a negative aspect of this approach right now would be that blogs don't cover everyone, and blogs don't cover everything about everyone. So you could just get a minimal amount of information. But what I want to show is it is possible, maybe not today, maybe after everyone in India and China and USA do have blogs and they do actively blog it, then you're going to have a high amount of information content. Most of the blogs nowadays, what, five years old, six years old, you still haven't thought about everything in your life. Let's say 10, 15 years down the line, when you can have sufficient amount of information about who that person is, you can create a better mapping of who that guy is, what does he like, what is his interest, what is his, like, you know, what, what are the stuff he doesn't like. I mean, one of the sectors that this could be really good is in tech sector, where people just blog every few minutes about, you know, hey, that's iPhone, man, that's like awesome, crackle I can know, something, you know. <laughs> so, those kind of networks, you can actually do this. But again, as I said, uh, it's about time, and uh, right now, I think it's good time that we can start <coughs> thinking about complex networks and see how we can uh, evolve it, make better strategies. And uh, I pretty much believe that the future of marketing is supposed to be supposed to be this and it could easily become this. But it's, you know, powerful computers and, yeah. Even, uh, I mean, I like the idea of understanding the network better so that you can propagate messages, but even if you have perfect knowledge about the network, I think you still have to construct your message properly in order to leverage the network behavior. So the meme has to be powerful enough that it will get propagated. Yeah, that's true. So uh, I think that that's part of the analysis. It's like completely ignored by your argument. I mean, you're focusing very much on the network structure and not so much how to create messages that actually leverage the network structure. But I use the one word I said was dynamic. So uh, what you can do is, right now, the impression is a static network, networks already formed. But most of the networks are dynamic. So you just need one guy who's really uh, evangelical about your message. And then the networks will start attaching themselves. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not able to cover a lot of things here. There are a lot of networks that we can talk about. One is a small world phenomena, then you have uh, how that occurs in CLP networks. So different networks that you can talk about. And uh, there are a lot of work that has been done. My my aim here is just to give an exposure. That this is interesting, please do look up on it. Uh, I'll look at it. Yeah. Okay, let's talk a little bit about social networking. Okay. And uh, now, uh, this whole concept of social networking is, in, is integrating everywhere. <coughs> I mean, you talk about blogs, MySpace, you can obviously uh, you know, network with others, and at the same time you have your blogs, where you can mine for information, uh, you know. So what, my question to you is, what if you have a new social networking portal that you want to market? Okay, there are, there are no particular nodes here, because a social networking portal does not really, uh, is not really specific to some a particular interest, you know, because it's, we, we kind, we're kind of working on a business idea. Like, so I think you actually answered your question. And you said a uh, social network is not of any particular interest. Yeah. Well, if you have an interest, you have a theme-based social network, it's going to work. Because when you have a node of these sort, and they're going to interlink with each other, there's going to be a need why they're going to interlink with each other, right? You have a relationship network, then you have a... And I said idea network, it could be any idea. It could even be jobs. Like, for example, LinkedIn, right? Is it, LinkedIn is a theme-based network. You have a theme, that's the job search that everyone wants to do. So hence, there's a need for the network to exist. So what you're trying to do is actually look at the existing network, and you're trying to create a theme for the network so that everyone actually populates it. And what's going to happen is once you start the theme, there's going to be people who want that, and they're going to agglomerate around it. And then you're going to have similar structures. So what this gives you is an idea as to how the future of social networking could go. Right now, we had just plain social networks. What they helped you was just communicate. but that was not possible because I guess the MSN could not have like a million people or MSN could not have degree, uh, you know, you, can, you can't see who's your friend of your friend of your friend. But that's about it. If you go theme-based network, like for example, home design, you know, uh, do DIY in your home. Now, if you have a social network on that, that could be really popular among people who are not interested in, you know, tech or music or anything. Because that is a network, people will come to it and it'll organize itself. How you go about that is, again, let's say you have an analysis of a network, you have one guy who likes DIY, 
and uh, we're like, okay, well, let's just invite them, and then we see how cool the network is. Maybe you have videos, maybe you have promotions. Isn't this already possible in uh, current social networks where you have communities uh, and blogs? I mean, I, I think it's pretty much in common. For example, all good groups and communities, okay? That just gives you one starting point uh, to reach the note that you're trying to look for. Yeah. You know, so I mean, a theme-based social network is a good idea, but when you have a wide-spanning social network like Orkut, uh, that for example, Facebook is a, you could call it a theme-based uh, social network because it started off with only university students, and that was its marketing point. But when you have a uh, when you have a wide social uh, network like Orkut, uh, you know, I, I don't see how a particular theme-based network would you know, would, would be able to compete against something like this, where which, you know, considering this gives you access to every possible community, every possible interest that you I guess possibly. it depends on what's your business idea. I mean, what do you want to do? If you want to create a strong community, then this network makes sense. If you don't want to create that, you want to create a general tendency, then you do your general startup. So, as in, isn't it a question of business strategy? I mean, From this network is just uh, telling you as in what is the organizing <coughs> principles. Rest is up to you, and then what's the business strategy? The other issue there <coughs> is you turn the tables around, right? If you're starting a new network, right, what value proposition do you bring to, to the audience? What is going to attract the people to switch from somebody else to, to you? And you have to have either a theme or a feature that doesn't, e well, it could exist in the market, you could compete directly with LinkedIn if you're in the job, in the job space. But you, you definitely do need something to try. You can't just say we're a general network and hope that people will adopt, right? That's true. Uh, one thing, at, so there are like a lot of stuff in this, on this networks. One other thing uh, you can actually see in the structure of networks is what they call efficiency. So when you have 